is not a character review. I know, I'm sorry for all of you who wanted this to be a character review. I know I didn't put one up for Divergent last week. I'm sorry about that, by the way. But as it is the week of Valentine's Day, I went back to this book. And in this book, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, there is a chapter, a Jason chapter. The chapter is told from Jason's point of view. It's called Jason, but everyone calls it the Cupid chapter. You guess the reason why, because Cupid makes a small appearance in this. And as he goes on about love, he says a very interesting line. Love is no game. It is no flowery softness. It is hard work, a quest that never ends. It demands everything from you. Well then, that puts a whole new spit on love. Usually, like Valentine's Day, you think of love like, you know, hearts and flowers and chocolates and couples. Or if you're single, it's Singles Awareness Day, but yeah, no. So with that line in mind, it made me think about all of the books in the world and everything that these, some of these characters have done in the name of love. Because some of it is kind of insane and crazy and like you took that just a little too far, but you did it out of love. How could it not be sweet in some way to some extent, but it's still violent and you're still going like, wow, you're... You're, you're really in love with them. So these are my top five most insane things people have done because of love. Because they were driven mad by love because love just caused this to happen. And this is going to be chucked full of spoilers because like I said, these are going to be insane things. So some of these things involve you knowing that someone dies and some really twisted stories. So let's look at it. Number five is coming in from Ranger's Predators. You see, I have the Royal Ranger here. This is the twelfth one in the series. Number twelve. I have a nice even number in a series. And in this one, we find out that Alyss dies. So, before you start going, who's Alyss? I'll tell you this. Will and Alyss, those are two characters in it. Will's the main character. He fell in love with Alyss. And in the last book, the previous book to this, they finally got married. It was one of those relationships where it was just bound to happen. But then, Alyss was on a mission because that's like what she does. She was doing her job and she ended up dying because of this one guy. So what does Will do? He completely forgets about his job as a ranger and kind of just goes around hunting down this guy. Like I said, it's like that is so sweet and I understand why you're doing it. You want revenge, but it's a little violent. Jeez, you got dark, Will. Will did get really dark. He was like so focused on revenge that Everyone around him was like, um, dude, calm down. It's, it's okay, we get it, we're here for you, but calm down. That was just, it was a crazy thing, but again, it was done out of love, and you can't help but be like, that is so sweet, that's so scary and creepy. Number four comes in from the Serpent Shadow. Now this one, this one isn't as extreme as someone going off and hunting down the person who killed the one they love. But it's still pretty crazy. And again, it's sweet. It's just pretty crazy and is like, that's putting you in a lot of danger just for a girl. And yes, I'm talking about Walt and Anubis. They might be going, what are you talking about? That is so sweet. Walt became Anubis's host so that both of them could be with Sadie. But then you have to look at it this way in which that the House of Life doesn't like people taking hosts. And that kind of puts Walt in danger and puts Sadie in danger because they're two, in two incredible guys in the same body. Yeah, every girl's going to want to go out with them. But uh, again, the House of Life not exactly liking that, so that's not a very good thing to have going, but they still did it because they both love her. It's it's above the Rangers Apprentice one, just because, like, that Anubis has ever taken a host, and Walt the, went to that extreme to stay alive for Sadie, but still, that's, that's putting a lot of them, all of them, in a lot of danger because of the whole hosting thing not being good with the House of Life. Number three. I know I'm going to hold this up and you guys are going to know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's from the Mark of Athena with our favorite couple ever. Yes, they go by the name of Percibeth. Percy and Annabeth. One of, like, every everyone who knows the Rick Riordan series, that is the best 
couple in the whole series. It might even be the best couple of all time. I don't know. It's a, that's my opinion. But in the Mark of Athena, at the very end, and Beth go off on her own quest while they were still looking for Nico and fighting giants and all this other stuff. And then at the end, they go there, they find Annabeth, they help her get out of this little cavern area, because she finally did this quest that everyone's been trying to do. Except, she gets pulled down into Tartarus, and Percy tries to save her, which of course he does. And then, except then he starts getting pulled down into Tartarus. Now, I know, you know, you all know where I'm going with this, because then Percy is, go he's holding onto the ledge, he's looking up there, he's looking down at Annabeth, and he just lets go. He let goes of the ledge, and he goes into Tartarus with her. Now, this is pretty insane, because Tartarus, that is Tartarus. Okay, it is tar it, it's where all the giants, titans, monsters, you name it, they've been in Tartarus. Any mythology thing, anything of mythology, that is the worst place to go, especially with Greek and Roman mythology, it's Tartarus. But he still went down there for her again. Out of love, he went to Tartarus, the worst place to go ever. Because he was not going to leave her, and he was not going to do that. It's insane, and it's sweet, and I wouldn't change it. I, j I just wouldn't change it. Again, I say, all these things are just insane things that these book characters have done in the name of love. Number two. Comes in from Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I don't have Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I have Dreams of Gods and Monsters. But in this series, Akiva and Karu, they're like the love that lasted over two lifetimes, kind of, because Karu died, and then she came back in the human world, and then he came into the human world, and they just found each other, and they knew, they knew it was, it was meant to be. That's how you know it was meant to be. But, before that, when Karu first died as Madrigal, I told you lots of spoilers, but when she first died as Madrigal, Akiva, Akiva kind of, um, destroyed her entire race because he was so mad and revenge-driven. Yeah! <laughs> That's pretty high up there. That's really high up there. He was so grief-struck and rage-driven that he pretty much destroyed her entire race. He helped destroy her entire race. He ignited the flame that destroyed her entire race. So, <laughs> all, all, again, all in the name of love! This one I probably would change, because that's like, that's, that's taking it really far. Really incredibly far, but... Again, it's in the name of love, and you're like, that is sweet to an extent. Like I said, he destroyed an entire race. To an extent, the love extent that's sweet, it, not, not, not much, it's not much of a reach, but it was still done in the name of love, and it's insane, and it gets the number two spot. Now you might be asking yourself, what could be more insane than killing an entire race for the girl that you love? Well, when it's spread over of about a thousand years, I can top it. And that one comes in from the record of a fallen vampire. Yeah, and if you notice, this is a manga. I know, I haven't reviewed a manga of all these books I have reviewed already. Except for this one. I will eventually review this series, I just gotta finish the series first. But... This is the record of a fallen vampire, and this is going to be chock full of spoilers. So here, on the cover, we have a cabra. That's him. He's the fallen vampire king. Yes, he's a vampire king. And at first, this series starts off in... Oh, Cupid? Oh. So the story is that a cabra was a vampire king. And then when they wanted to, like, get rid of him because he was way too powerful and everyone feared him, like humans and vampires, and everyone feared him, they... Kidnapped his wife. First, I, I don't know where in this plan they thought that this was going to be a good idea. And he surrendered, but when he did, the queen set off an energy that nearly destroyed the world. And, but it didn't, because they sealed her away, and then he got mad, and he didn't die, obviously, and went off to find the seal and break it and free her. Only problem... The humans thought ahead and made so many other seals that to the point where they don't even know which one's the real one. He, he doesn't know. He can't go ask somebody and be like, hey, you tell me where the real seal is. <laughs> there, no one knows which one's the real seal, so he's just going around blowing up seals. And he's been doing that for a thousand years. I know, right? That is so sweet. He 
pretty much abandoned his kingdom, which again, he, he knows that he messed up with that one. But he did that again out of love. Oh, but wait! There's more! You might be thinking, that's really sweet, and like, abandoned his kingdom, but he's still looking. And there's, but wait, there's more. You see, he also had to face off the Black Swan. And that is pretty much this curse thing that is that goes around taking a new host every single time he kills her until he is dead. It's the only thing that can oppose him. But wait, there's more! Later on in the series, you find out that he doesn't love his queen. No! He's going after her for revenge! Yes, he wants to kill her because the girl he really fell in love with, who is this human girl named Stella, and like... He, they were in love. He was just like, if, she, if only she would have lived another month, she would still be here and we, everything would be fine. But no, because his queen found out, well, his future queen at this point, and killed her so that she could be with him. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I haven't got through that whole series, but wow. <laughs> this guy's not lucky when it comes to love. Wow. So... He's driven by revenge to go and find a girl he thought he loved and kill her to avenge the girl he loves and lo loved and loves that she killed. And he's been doing this for a thousand years and he refuses to stop. He's like, I'm not going to quit. I don't care who gets in my way. I don't care who I have to, what I have to do, who I have to kill. I will find her and I will kill her. Like that, like to the point where a couple people find out because of a situation. I don't want to give everything away. This is just love stuff. But there's a situation, and they're like, "Oh wait, oh, God, this is a problem now." Because everyone thought that he was in love with her, but still, the whole idea is just beautiful and amazing, but also insane. Because like I said, he pretty much abandoned his entire kingdom because of love. He abandoned his kingdom because of love, and he is still fighting after a thousand years and he's a vampire, he's immortal, he could go on forever. So, those are my top five most insane things characters have done in the name of love. Some of them were pretty brutal, some of them were like sweet, but then you think about it in retrospect, that's pretty crazy. And that is exactly how Cupid said it in the House of Hades. It is love is a quest that never ends. Especially for this guy. Never <laughs> ends. But it drives people to do crazy and insane things. Now, don't you fear? I know a lot of you might be going, but wait, that's, that's, I don't like love now. No, I, I don't want Valentine's Day to come. No, 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 this was one side of love, the more brutal side. We always gotta get the bad out of the way first. Now we're gonna go to the good next time. Thanks for watching, and have a great Valentine's Day if you watch this video second. But be sure to watch the other one, too, because that one will make you feel a lot better about love. So, have a great Valentine's Day. Watch out for Cupid, because he might be flying around ready to shoot his arrows at anyone who is celebrating Seagulls Awareness Day, because that's Valentine's to sing people. So, have fun with whichever holiday you're celebrating, Valentine's Day or Seagulls Awareness Day. And I'll see you guys here next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!